Hello friends, welcome to the second part of the chapter Changing Cultural Traditions. It took a little bit time uh, for me to upload the second part due to some issues. So first of all, sorry for that and then uh, let us begin the topic or the chapter with the topic known as Artist and Realism. So for this topic, take down a question. How did humanists give a realistic form to Italian art? So we came to know that artists, they were inspired by studying works of the past. Now whatever materials that they get or from wherever they get, whichever source is that, they really want to study that and from that they are very much mesmerized and after being mesmerized they wanted to do or they wanted to bring out some more art so that people uh, could also you know go for it that means they have this uh, uh, a kind of you know anxiety a kind of feeling like why not we also we create some kind of realistic art uh, that will make them also popular like those um, artists of the past now for that you know the the work of scientists helped uh, the concerns of the artist artists went on uh, to the laboratories of the medical uh, schools to study bone structures now why it is necessary now why are they reading this bone structures and all you know uh, we used to say like anatomy if if the anatomy of the human body is well understood now we can make out like uh, which uh, means the ratio of the or the proportion of the body can be made out and that can give our uh, you know the paintings the sculpture whatever it is uh, the proper shape the realistic shape so here also the artist started to go towards the laboratories of the uh, medical schools so that they can study the bone structure now likewise uh, one uh, person that means a Belgian Andreas uh, Vassilis he was a professor of the medicine at the University of Padua. Now he was the first to dissect the human body. Uh, this was the beginning of the modern physiology. Now painters had no older works to use them as models. But uh, they, like sculptor, tried to draw realistic paintings uh, now they could understand their perspective with a knowledge of geometry now when we see this this means what is that uh, whenever the painter paints something in order to give it a realistic looks he started to uh, read like what is a perspective now when you say perspective means it is all about geometry like the middle part or the center part of the image will be very small and as it comes towards the uh, end of it, it becomes larger or wider. So that gives us a look of a very wide road or a road which goes quite far. That means it is perspective. Now through words, it is very difficult to explain. But they started to study all this perspective and then uh, all this is done because of the help of geometry. Now with the changing quality of light, their pictures could acquire a three-dimensional quality. Now. Uh, whenever we draw, whenever we draw some kind of, uh, any kind of paintings and all, if we are new, we have no idea like what is the control of light. Now from where the light is falling or, or from which side the uh, light is, you know, sh uh, showing its uh, all energy and which side should be darker. We never know about this or we can't even follow. But a good artist, he or she really t uh, tries to see that whatever they draw in that the effect of light is such that it looks like as if the light is falling in the right part and if, if the light falls on the right side, which, uh, which side should have the shadow. They all take care of this. We, we are just ordinary painters so we have no idea but the real painters or those painters who are very uh, good they take care of all these things that means quality of light and because of this quality of life uh, light it gives them the three-dimensional quality they use oil in painting and using of oil in painting has given a rich or greater richness of color to the paintings than before 
There is an evidence of influence of a Chinese and Persian art in the colors and design of the costumes in many paintings. This art was made available to them by the Mongols. Now in this way, a new quality of Italian art was given uh, because of three or four subjects like anatomy, geometry, physics and a strong sense of what was beautiful. Now this new quality was named as realism. Now this tradition of realism or realism continued till the 19th century. Now when you talk about realism means what? Remember it is all about like if whatever you draw it should be like so realistic that people can make up whether it is a, a image or a real person standing. As in case I'll just scroll up now. Now when I scroll up I we come across this image right or a sculpture. Now when you look at this sculpture you can see the work of a sculpture. Here the the image or the portrait looks so real okay now here you can see uh, this uh, sculptor has the great idea means he is very well known with the human anatomy so you can see the ratio or uh, you can see how a person will look if he is lying completely lifeless so uh, this is one of it now what is this all about you can see it is like Mary Okay, holding body of Jesus whatever it is like what what we can see is like it looks as if the real uh, person is holding you know a dead person or a person who is lifeless now I'll just scroll up once again to show you this hand this hand is also not the you know the click or it is not a picture of a hand it is a painting of a hand look at the the fine things that they had taken care of like finest things we we won't be able to draw all these things so this is how the painters and the uh, you know because of the art because of the anatomy because of uh, physics here they control the light they control the geometry means all these things were taken care of and thus they got this they got some some kind of art which is so real that people they find it very difficult to uh, spare it out or you know to uh, differentiate whether it is real or it is just a statue so we reach the next topic this is architecture take down a question for this the question is describe the development of architecture in Rome in the Renaissance age so here we can see that in the 15th century the city of Rome was revived in a spectacular way now popes became politically stronger from 1417. Now study of Rome's history was actively encouraged by them. Uh, whatever history was there about Rome was, you know, it was brought up or it was uh, spread by the popes so that people or mass can study all about Rome. Now archaeologists carefully excavated the ruins of Rome now it encourage a new style of architecture now when you talk about uh, developments of architecture means here you see Rome was already ruined then uh, the archaeologists started to uh, excavate this thing and when they excavate they found different kinds of architecture their style was very new okay now this style was actually a form of the imperial Roman style it was called cl classical now those architects uh, now who were employed by popes uh, now, or by wealthy merchants or by aristocrats were uh, also familiar with the classical architecture means whatever they, whatever they excavated it was not new to them but they know like when they excavate they found something and as they found it they immediately they can classify it like okay this is a classical architecture then uh, in this age now buildings were also decorated by artists and sculptor with uh, you know paintings and sculptors or reliefs were different different types of things were uh, made during this time and uh, when the excavation was made or when the excavation was done they found all these things now in this age once again there were some persons who were equally skilled as 
painters, sculptors and architects. Uh, likewise, there is one person who is uh, known as uh, Michelang Michelangelo and our Bruno Ratti or you can say Bono Rotti. Now he was one of them, means the same person, he is a painter, he is a sculptor, he is also an architect. Now he painted the ceilings of the Pope of uh, Sistine Chapel, which you can see on your, uh, you know, the video or the PPT which is there, uh, chapel is there. Now sculptor called the Peter and designed the dome of the St. Peter's Church. Now all these works are in Rome. Now, as I as I explain this, what we can see is this. Like now, I'll just zoom in. in. So now you can see this part, okay, or this dome, or you can see the church. Now this is all done by one fellow. Okay, now the dome. When you see the dome, is the uh, roof has been designed by this man. Okay, whom we just express like he is a man of like with different different. Uh, knowledge like painter, sculptor, and architect. Now, who is this? Michelangelo uh, Bruno Rotti. Or uh, this man, okay, he tried to make something uh, out of nothing, we can say. Like, whatever he draw, whatever he made, whatever he tried to bring it in, he tried to show that it has got life. Means, you know. Uh, something we just had finished like artist with realism so whatever he drew it was it seems that it has got life and he said that whatever i will do whatever i will be performing it will last forever now another person of this era okay now when when we just read about this now was uh, filippo okay now he is also one of the remarkable men who uh, who have done so many uh, you know sculpting and all now Filippo now he's he's also an architect we can see now he designed a spectacular uh, Duomo of Florence and started his career as a sculptor so you can see they don't have only one thing or one knowledge they know many different ideas of means many different art so another remarkable change was that uh, from that time was that the artists were known individually by name not as members or group or guild or as earlier now uh, what does it mean is that when these painters started to stand on their own they were not known with the name of the groups because they started to perform some kind of duties or some kind of activities that people started loving it uh, as in case as in case like uh, if you find like a painting Mona Lisa who have done it like we know that it is done by Leonardo so now in the same way this people you know uh, during their time there were some groups a uh, grouping was there like this work is done by this group that work is done by that group but uh, these people came out from those groups and all and instead of that like instead to be called as a group they came out forward and they were not known by the group but they were no they were known or they the people started to know them by their names because of their works that is what we just have to uh, say or uh, wrote about the architecture now this architecture was so means you know people could not even imagine like a dome could be made in such an in such a way that it remains so beautiful for out for ages even if even if we get a chance to visit this area you will be mesmerized to see it okay right uh, just by looking at the picture itself it seems like how a person of that era could do or could finish or could bring out such a beautiful art on the domes and all right so just just before this we had just done about the sculptor where mother mary is holding jesus now this type of uh, art where if you are able to give life to a stone means you are genius right so that is what they say describe the development of architecture so as it went on as it went on people started learning more and more way of uh, you know making buildings making uh, you know bringing out something which is not like others they had buildings and 
each building is different than the other each has got different or distinct style and this is what happened in rome during the renaissance ages